Hello students, welcome to biology lesson about environment. Our today's lesson is unit 6 about environment, 6.1 about ecosystem. Students, do you remember how, how could you define environment so far? Yeah, let me define environment and I come to, uh, to the, our today's lesson to ecosystem. Environment is surrounding where living things live and operate. That means in the, in the environment there is living things within the environment, living thi things operate or operation of life takes place within the environment. Uh, can you call the name of environment by which living things are operate? Yes, students, let me uh, tell you environments that support life. Environment includes air or atmosphere, land mass, water bodies. These and all are environments because they support life. Let's come to 6.1 about ecosystem. Uh, before that, let me remind you about ecology and ecologists because it has to do with ecologists. This Do you remember about ecologist and ecology? Yeah, ecology is the uh, branch of biology that study about living things and their environments, especially the relationship between the environments and the living organisms. Can you tell me an example of a given environment within its life? Yes, you can say, for example, Lake Tana, along with its fish, mount some parks with, with other organisms, like us, uh, uh, Samin Mountain with uh, Wale Ibex. So this is environment along with their life. They support the life. And also, if you remember, ecologists are a person who study about ecology. That means they study about a, g a given environment along with the relationship of their lives. Before ecosystem, let me come to the uh, biosphere. Before that, there is biosphere. Uh, because our planet or Earth is very huge and biologically it's named as biosphere. And uh, here that's why ecology is, uh, eco ecosystem is uh, some part of the biosphere. So it is subdivision or unit of the biosphere. This classification is very important for the ecologists because there are different ecologist uh, scholars uh, that study different environments. Some ecologists study uh, about aquatic environments. Other ecologists study about forests. Others study about lakes, ocean, and uh, such such. For this, ecology is a subunit of the, the biosphere, which is very suitable for, the, for studying. Accordingly, we are going to define ecosystem. Here is a definition. Ecosystem is a given area where biotic factors interact with abiotic factors. It's a given area. That's why we, can, we say that it's a subunit of, uh, a, of a biosphere. So ecosystems uh, best explained, uh, expl uh, explained in the presence of biotic and abiotic factors. So what are the biotic factors of the ecosystems? The biotic factor of the ecosystem, as the name implies that, biotic means just it concerning with life or living things. So it includes all the following living things that are available within the ecosystems, plants, animals, and the microorganisms. Do you name any other life or organisms other than this? No, no other organisms. The living things are plants, animals, and the microorganisms are the living things with an ecosystem. The second factor of an ecosystem is uh, abiotic factors. Abiotic factors, that means non-living things or physical factors or parts of the ecosystems. 
So there are many, uh, they, it includes all non-living things such as climatic condition, soil feature factors, temperature, light, nutrients, and uh, such such things. They are said to be or considered as the, the non-living part or physical part of the ecosystems. Another point, the very important point is there is interaction, interaction within ecosystems, because there is interaction between uh, biotic factors and the non-biotic factor within our ecosystems. For what pu purpose do you think interaction takes place among organisms wi within our ecosystems? Of course, there are several reasons. The very important part uh, for what, for, for, the, for the interaction that uh, living organisms undergo is the first is for the purpose of food and the second is for reproduction, for the survival. So this interaction is taking place within the ecosystems among the different factors. So the possible interaction taking place within an ecosystem is interaction between biotic factors, that means living things, interaction between abiotic factors, between bio between abiotic factors and abiotic factors. The third is interaction between biotic and abiotic factors. Interaction between biotic factors, that means between animals and the plants for the purpose of food, for the pur purpose of reproduction. So interaction takes place between uh, living things. The second is interaction between abiotic factors. There is interaction between uh, soil and sunlight and air and the nutrients. Interaction between biotic and abiotic factors. For example, plants need several physical factors for the well development. For example, plants need temperature, nutrients from the soil in order to grow well. So this is the direct relationship between them. The next point is how big is an ecosystem? How big is an ecosystem? Actually, uh, this it has to do with the size of ecosystem. We can explain the size of ecosystems uh, uh, as small ecosystem and the big ecosystems uh, for different purposes. So an ecosystem can be as small as a single tree pond, aquarium, and uh, others. Another ecosystem can be as big as forest, ocean, desert, etc. So based on this explanation, we can conclude that ecosystems vary greatly in size and the elements that make up them. So ecosystems are different by the life they contain and the elements uh, uh, available within the ecosystem. So it makes uh, vary the ecosystems. Not only this one, because of the size and the elements availab availability within an ecosystem, the number of life available or present within an ecosystem is also quite different. An ecosystem that has very uh, or improved uh, uh, food qualities or necessary materials support large number of populations. On the other hand, if an ecosystem is very poor it's in its food content and other necessary materials, that ecosystem relatively supports very less number of organisms. The next point is types of ecosystems. Uh, generally, there are two types of ecosystems in this world. The first ecosystem is aquatic ecosystem, the second is terrestrial ecosystem. Aquatic ecosystem includes all water bodies. You can list uh, from the smallest to the biggest parts of water bodies, from pond, lake, river, to the oceans. The next is terrestrial ecosystem. Yeah, it includes forest, grassland, and the desert. Uh, aquatic ecosystem in terms, uh, it could be de divided into two as freshwater bodies and the marine uh, ecosystems. Lakes, rivers, and the ponds are freshwater, 
whereas the ocean is uh, saline, that is, uh, 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 it contains high concentration of salt, that's why it's marine ecosystem. And also terrestrial ecosystems are so several. Uh, you learned a lot in social studies, the different uh, ecological system or ecosystem of the world. There are different grasslands, savanna grasslands, mediterranean uh, vegetations, and so so. Six point two is about biological associations or symbiosis. This also another important factor that's available within an within ecosystem. So what is biological associations or symbiosis? This is, uh, it is a general biological term of living together in a close association of two organisms of different species. There is association for different purposes within an organism. Some association may be positive, others may be negative. Uh, let me see one by one. The first association is parasitism. Parasitism. In this relationship, one organism benefits, that means the parasite is beneficial from the association, whereas the other is harmed, that means the host. This, this relationship consists of host and the parasite. So only parasite is benefited from the association, that means the parasite is provide food and shelter uh, by the host, whereas the host is uh, highly affected. Uh, the two types of parasites are also ectoparasites and endoparasites. There are two types of parasites, that means. As the name implies that, ecto means <coughs> external, endo means internal. Some parasites are living inside of the host, whereas the other parasites are living on the outer body surface of, of the host. Let me see uh, one by one. Endoparasites, example, ascaris, tapeworm, amoeba, and the hookworms. So these parasites are endoparasites. They affect or attack human beings and other animals. The second is ectoparasites, which live on the outer body of its host. It includes phileas, bags, and the ticks. This is most common in the cattle and the other domestic animals. The second association is predation. It is prey-predator relationship. Prey-predator relationship. In this relationship also, one organism is killer. That means it's benefited from the association, whereas the other uh, organ is killed. That is prey. Predators are skillful, very strong, and faster than their prey. This is the characteristics of, of predators. Some of them are carnivorous, like as li lion, tiger, and some of them are omnivorous, like as bears. So this is still, uh, we are talking about uh, associations. So in this association, one of the organisms positively affected, the other is negatively affected. The third association is mutualism. Mutualism. In this association, both organisms benefit equally from the, from the association. It is the relationship in which both organisms are benefited from the association. Both organisms. Let me see one by one types of mutualism. Animal-animal relationships, example, crocodiles and the Egyptian birds. Plants animal relationships, example, bees and the flowering plants. Algae fungi relationships, 
That means when algae and the fungi cooperate together, they form another organism like them. The four of these microorganisms in the plants or animals, termites in the protozoa, this is uh, animal, animal, relationship, animal and microorganism relationship, nitrogen fixing bacteria in the leguminous plants, this is relationship between microorganisms and plants. Students, can you discuss how both organisms benefited from the association in the above? Refer table 6.2, what does each relationship look like? Okay, that's, that's enough. Animal animal relationships, example, crocodiles and Egyptians. The relationship between crocodile and Egyptians, uh, these Egyptian birds are uh, benefited from the crocodiles. They get food from the inside mouth of the crocodiles. So this relationship benefits both organisms. That means birds are able to get food Whereas on the other hand, they clean the teeth of the crocodile. The second is uh, relationship between plants and uh, uh, animals. This is bees and the flowering plants or bees and uh, or insect and the flower. Bees are benefited from the flower because they obtain nectar, their food. Whereas plants are also uh, used uh, benefited from the insects in the form of pollination. That means uh, bees are responsible in pollinating uh, flowering plants. So the distribution of the flowering plant may be diverse. The other is algae fungi leadership. Uh, algae, uh, especially green algae. Not all algae, green algae and the fungi. So green algae undergo photosynthesis, and hence they can prepare food for the association. So the fungi benefit in getting food from the association, whereas also algae has also its own specific functions that they support, they uh, protect the association and they provide other uh, necessary things like as water. The other is microorganisms and the plants and the animals, termites and the protozoa. Yeah, in termites there is protozoa, so that means uh, it is very important in the uh, digestion system. The other is nitrogen fixing bacteria and the leguminous plants. This is the association between microorganisms and plants. Leguminous plants like us, uh, uh, beans and the peas and other cereal crops. So this nitrogen fixing bacteria are living in the, in the root or in the node part of the plant and they uh, fix the nitrogen uh, element or the nitrogen uh, uh, element or, or nutrient in the form of usable by plants. That means nitrogen is directly not used by plants. So they must be, the nitrogen must be converted into other form, which is easily used by plants. That is in the form of nitrates. And as well also they are, uh, the ligamentous plants their root or the nerve part is served for the microorganisms being as a shelter. This is the relationship uh, between uh, about uh, types about mutualism. So they are, both organisms are benefited from the association. The fourth symbiosis or association is commensalism. In this relationship, one organism is benefited, but the other is neither benefited nor harmed. For example, grazers, cattle or grazer animals and birds, that means the relationship between grazers and the birds. In this relationship, 
only birds are uh, uh, benefit from the association, whereas the grazer animals are neither benefit nor harming. For example, when grazer animals graze the grass, they stir up different uh, types of insects which are usable as a food for the birds. So such birds or cattle egrets follow the, the step of cattle during graze, grazing. So they get food from the grass while the animals graze the grass. Uh, the other example is the relationship between shark and the remora fish. The relationship between shark and the remora fish. So here is also remora fish is benefited from the association. That means in water while transporting, the remora fish is attached on under side of the the shark fish and uh, used for the purpose of trans uh, transportation. Uh, and that means uh, uh, remora fish takes advantage of protection. They protect themselves from the predators. That means the shark protects the remora from their predators. This is all about the uh, biological association within an ecosystem among two organisms. The next two point is another uh, mode of another uh, modes of nutrition for survival. Actually, this is not uh, uh, the association. The first one is decomposer. Decomposer, they are organisms or especially microorganisms, they feed or decompose on the dead matter bodies in order to get their food. The second is scavengers. Scavengers, animals feed on the dead body of other animals. Even though uh, two of the organisms feed on dead body matter, their feeding mechanisms is very different. Microorganisms uh, release enzyme on the dead body in order to decompose the dead parts. So this way they can easily get the food from the dead organism. But the scavengers are directly eat the uh, dead or car carcass animals. For example, we can mention here hyena and also very fam famous bird uh, that's called uh, uh, a bird vulture. They are well known as scavengers. So they are important in the cleansing up of the environment. Otherwise, if dead organisms are not removed from the environment, the environment is very polluted. So they are <coughs> important part of uh, mode of nutrition. OK, students, let's summarize what we have discussed so far. We discussed about ecosystem. We defined ecosystem as a given area where biotic factors and uh, abiotic factors interact each other and one another. Biological factors and the physical factors are the, the important component of an ecosystem. So when ecosystem contains both biological and uh, uh, physical factors, the ecosystem is complete, or the ecosystem is said to be complete ecosystems. The biotic factors include all living things, plants, animals, and the microorganisms, whereas the abiotic factors or physical factors of the ecosystem include uh, many physical factors, soil, water, air, elements, and other mineral salts. So there is the main point of ecosystems a reaction or interaction. There is interaction between biotic and abiotic factors within ecosystems for different purposes, for food, shelter, and reproduction, or for survival. The other is the interaction with an, the possible interaction with within an ecosystem is interaction between biotic factors, intera introduction, interaction between uh, abiotic factors, interaction between biotic and abiotic factors. So ecosystems could be small ecosystems, and some of the ecosystem could be very big ecosystems with different uh, uh, content of biological life and elements. For this, ecosystems greatly different in size 
and elements that make up. The other is types of ecosystems. We classified ecosystems into two as aquatic ecosystems and terrestrial ecosystems. Aquatic ecosystem includes all water bodies, that is fresh water bodies, and the marine environment, that is ocean. The terrestrial part of ecosystem is also forest, grassland, desert, and others. The other is biological association within an ecosystem between two organisms. The first association is parasitism. In this relationship, one organism is benefited, the other is, uh, is negatively affected. That means the host is affected, whereas the parasites benefited from the association. There are two types of parasites, endoparasites and exoparasites. The other is predation. This is prey, uh, predator relationships. In this relationship, one organism is said to be killer, and the other is uh, animals that to be killed, prey and uh, predators. So predators are very uh, strong and uh, uh, skillful than their prey. The other is mutualism. In this relationship, both organisms are equally benefited or, or benefited from the association. Uh, the other is commensalism. In this relationship, one organism is benefited, but the other is neither benefited nor affected. Uh, also, other mode of other modes of nutrition for survival, we uh, decomposer and the scavengers also. Uh, very important part of an ecosystem. Uh, to survive, decomposers are uh, feed on dead body, and the scavengers are also feed on dead matter or living things. So they are important in the cleansing up of the environment. Students, this is uh, all about the first part of ecosystem we have discussed so far. Uh, uh, I hope you need to uh, read again more detail in detail your textbook. For two days, it's better to stop here until next week or next class. Goodbye.